bit of a different episode this week. We're getting, getting, getting distant episodes. We're doing a lot of motorbike stuff here. We're at one to one motorbike training with um, uh, uh, Casey Stacy, cra Crazy Stacy. What was your name, sorry? <laughs> Rachel Stacy. That's it. The crazy dad's favourite. <laughs> Racy Stacy. Yeah. And we're talking about, because I've got to do my motorbike licence for ages. I just haven't been allowed to, really, I think. Probably the best way of doing it. And I really want to do it. And I've got no idea how it works or, or what you do, you know. What motorbike you need, do you have to have your own motorcycle or, or stuff like that? So could you sort of talk us through? So I've just rung you up. Hello, who's this? <laughs> who's this? Yeah. Well, I hope you've come through to one-to-one -one motorbike training. Yeah. <laughs> so first steps is to do CBT, compulsory basic training. It's a day's course. Uh, Saturday or Sunday. Come under 200 quid. Yep. Yeah. Under 200 quid. Includes the use of the bike. Uh, you come and spend a day with us and we introduce you to riding. Um, so it's to get you up and running safely. Still class as a learner and under CBT, because you're over 16, you can ride up to a 125. Uh, wow. Aha, uh -huh, the power is there. No, it won't because of white. <laughs> <laughs> Although, from what you're saying yeah. to me of how you're going to be a bit of a daisy, we oh. might start you on an automatic. Really? Yeah. Can you ride a push bike? Yeah. Yeah. You're all right for balance then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you start on a, on, a, on, a, on a 125. Is that everybody starts so on a 125? if you're 16, you can only ride up to a 50cc. Mm -hmm. 17 and above, you can ride up to a 125. You still class as a learner, so you have to have L plates on your bike front and back. Yeah. Can't carry passengers, can't do motorway traffic. So if you, if you have your own 125 bike, you can use that. No, no, so what you have do, to use a school yeah, bike. Yeah, so the cost includes the use of the bike. Um, if you was a renewal and coming back and your renewal was still in date, so your CBT was still in date, then yes, you could ride your own bike. Um, but for the sake of you, you would be on one of ours. Okay, so, so for that day, you, you taken down a country road somewhere out the middle of nowhere where there's no cars. <laughs> you wish. And you, put, and, you put, and you put tennis balls out and stuff like that. No, so it, you know. how it works, yeah. you'd come here, so we'll get you checked in, check your driving licence, make sure it's all in date. Um, we'll do an introduction to the course, what's involved on the day. Um, we'll get you kitted out, helmet, jacket, gloves as part of the course we can provide that for you. Um, once we've introduced you to the course, we'll then take you up to our off-road site, a few minutes up the road, and get you introduced to the bikes, the controls, how it all works. We'll start with basic skills, stop, start, figure of eight, slalom, so you're comfortable on the bike. As the day progresses, then we'll introduce more skills, set up a road scenario, um, and then prep you to go into road Right, okay. So then you've done your day, you've spent your 200 quid or whatever, under 200 quid for that day, then, then, well, then what happens? So as long as you're showing us that you're safe and in control of that bike, <laughs> <laughs> we will issue you with your CBT certificate. Okay. That's then valid for two years. So from the day that it's issued, it's valid for two years. So you've got two years to do it in and Absolutely, then you're right, okay. yeah. yeah. If you want to move on to your full license, you'll need to do your motorcycle theory test. Mm -hmm. That's £23, book it direct with the DVLA. Um, you don't need it for your CBT, but with wanting to move on, you'll need it to do your full okay. licence. So that, that, and how much does that cost you? £23. £23, quid. Yeah. OK. So then I've done that, I've passed that, with flying colours. <laughs> he says. <laughs> and then, then, then I'll ring you up again. So it, if you've got, it depends which way you want to go, If depending on how you're progressing. So obviously once you've done your CBT, at CBT we can tell you how many sessions we think you would need okay. to progress you through to your full licence. That includes the training and the test days. Right. Typically somebody with riding experience, you touched on you've done some motocross in mm. the past. So depending on how you get on on the day, it might be that you need five or six sessions, might be that you need more than I'm going to need more on that, I know I will. Because <laughs> a road bike is totally different to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. It's just totally different. And what we do is we then tailor that course for you. Yeah. So it would be a transfer day where we start you on the 125 again, transfer you onto the bigger bike, do a lot of slow manoeuvre stuff because it's the hardest part of riding. Um, and from there we then progress the training through to doing preparation for your mod one. So, so is, it, is it a block? Per, is it a payment per day sort of thing? Is it? Is it? You know the cost to say it's I don't know, 
80 quid for the day. Yeah. As a, as a off so, the it's not what it is probably. And then you work out, oh, you're going to need five. So we charge you five times 80 quid and that's... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And what we tend to do is we spread it over the course of two weeks. So the first week is your transfer, you're training for your mod one and your mod one test. The second week is then you're training for your mod two and your mod two test. Um, if you book all the schedule with us, I would assign you to your test and book all your tests. And all you would need to do is turn up here on the day at the date and time that I've given okay. you, pay for that day, and then go from there. Right. Each session's four hours, so it's normally a morning and that or an includes afternoon. the bike again, does Absolutely, it? Yeah. yeah, and the gear as well. So helmet, jacket, and gloves, oh, we can provide oh, that for good. you. That's good value, that. Yeah, okay. So then if I pass, then I'll get the license and I'm away. <laughs> can you do like an advanced sort of, not a test as such, but, spend you know spend another day with you out on the road with you so you you can get more comfortable with yeah, it yeah absolutely once you've passed because when i did my driving test I, I literally the day after i paid them a day yeah. rate to go and take me on the motorway so i knew yeah. how to ride motorways and things like that is yeah, that something absolutely you could, you could so once you've passed your test um, and you get your own bike and you you phone me up we could book in some time with mark or ian and uh, take you out and do some more in-depth training to get you mm. comfortable on your bike and and how it works for you. Now the other thing that's well that I'm a little bit concerned about <laughs> is that I'm going to really like it. <laughs> like my nephew. No. <laughs> and I want to go on a track. Yep. Is that something you could help out with? No, like Absolutely. book a track day yeah. and we go and do it, get my knee down. All that <laughs> well actually, my knee will be out. It won't be down. <laughs> knee, knee down, yeah. ass down, elbow down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is that something you can train yeah, as well? You absolutely. can do all that yeah, sort of stuff? Yeah, and, and we, we can work with you on that, take you to the local circuit, Snetterton, whether you do it on your bike or one of hours yeah. videoing and and uh, yeah, yeah and making improvements yeah because <laughs> I, I yeah I, i'd like to think that's that's something I, I, i'd want to get to that, but i don't think so i think i'm just going to be too scared as it is which is strange because obviously i've raced cars car, and yeah. yeah i've raced cars and everything and it, it doesn't even i don't even think about it but a motorcycle it's, it's everybody else as well that's the other thing mm -hmm. it's everybody else on the road that's the worry i think i think that's what's sort of concerning me a bit but yeah so right <coughs> say i've passed my test i want to get out on the road now i need a helmet i need a jacket i need trousers jeans or whatever or you know is that something you you know we see a whole sort of a, a array of stuff here yeah do i do I go for the cheapest? Do I go for the most expensive? Is there, is there a range for my sort of pocket or, or what I need? It comes down to what your budget is. Yeah. There's always entry level, yeah. so the, the cheaper end, or we go up to the higher end, depending on what your budget is, how much you're wanting to spend, and why you're riding. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're looking to ride more pleasure, so when the sun actually does shine, <laughs> <laughs> you might not need to spend a lot of money on the textile clothing and so, things like that. Yeah. You might want to go down uh, a shirt, hoodie type jacket, still gives you the protection, but it's a better way of riding yeah. for you. Is, because it, you're is it something pressure. you can just walk us around and show us? Yeah, show absolutely. Show us some stuff and some helmets and see what we got. The Where do we start? Do we start at the low, low cost? Well, well, it's not really the right Come thing to way. say, is it? Because Oxford is, is a good sort of range to, but to start us, it? But it comes down to what your budget is. Yeah. There's such a wide vast of options that are available to you. You don't look at Oxford and go expensive because they offer lots of different products to you. Yeah. Come on, let's go and have let's a look. Let's have a look. Come on. Yeah. Mark. Come and meet my new friend. <laughs> Hello, Mark. I'm one of the instructors. Oh, yeah. Hello. Mark will help you. Yeah. He'll introduce you to helmets and lots of variations and some clothing right. for you. Okay, Adam. So, you've already had a look at uh, our big range here that we've got on the clothing side of things. A cornucopia. A cornucopia, indeed. Of clothing. One of the most important, well, the most important item of safety equipment is a helmet. helmet. Yeah. Okay, um, we've we'll, we'll always got a great range here of Shark and HJC helmets. Um, you can see we always have sale items as well. And what we want to look at and what we always recommend to our students, okay, is that you go to a motorcycle shop mm -hmm. to get a helmet fitted, okay? Really important that fit on your helmet safety-wise. So you want that tight pinch, pinch to your cheeks, 
Often when you get a helmet on, it might feel a bit tight, but if you've got somebody that knows how to fit a helmet to you, all right, that's gonna result in a helmet that A, is in your budget, and B, is safe, okay? So, do you wanna have a look? Yeah. Come on yeah. then. Well, I don't know what you recommend. Well, Shark, obviously, I presume you recommend, but. Yeah, I mean, all these helmets, okay, first thing you should be checking when you're buying a helmet, that we got an EC2205, 2206 on the on the helmet. All of our helmets have got that. That is an EC regulation that will tell you that that helmet is safe and legal for use as a motorcycle helmet in the UK. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another good reason to go to a shop rather than trying to get a cheap one off of eBay. Who knows where that's come from? So do you recommend a, a full face or open or, you know, well, quite like the look at them, you see, that's the thing. You see, that looks like a yeah. open face, but what happens with that one? We've got a chin bar that comes over and now it's a full face. Yeah, quite like okay. that. Okay, so that is that is a really good option for those of you that, uh, let's say, go into a petrol station. Quite often, they want to see your face. Don't have to take your helmet off. Flip it flip it over, yeah. okay? So something like that is a really, really good option. Um, the other thing you need to be careful about, or let's say aware about, when you're looking at your helmets, they'll always come with different types of strap. Okay, so this one's a simple little ratchet system. Yeah. Okay, which just plugs in like so. See, that looks a bit fiddly for me. Well, there you go, that's my that. big fingers. <laughs> Give it <laughs> no, a go. No, well, I've got to get that in here when it's all right, weird. So, it push down or? No, here we go. We just click it up and that'll come out nice and easy. Oh yeah. So you've got to imagine when that's on your bonce, all right, you're doing that blind. Yeah. So a ratchet system, again, it's really convenient. Other types of strap, you've got like a, 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 a plain strap and double Ds. That's a really secure fixing, but it's not that convenient when you're going to the shops or your social riding, that sort of thing. So there's lots to think about with these types of helmet, okay? Even if we're looking at this, flip that up. Well, we've got an internal sun visor, mm, which is idea. great yeah. for use again, very convenient. You can flip that up and down as the light levels change. Not like a fire pilot. It is like a fire pilot. <laughs> you don't look much like Maverick to me, mate, but there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but that's, cold, that's again another good reason to come somewhere like us to choose a helmet, okay? A number, the, the fit, types of strap, chin strap, okay? Going through the various different options you've got on all of these types of helmet. We do sell open face helmets. You know, they're, they're quite um, popular for scooter riders and that sort of thing. I don't tend to recommend them. Obviously, if we're unlucky enough to come off in a crash, mm. gives you much less protection, mm. yeah. okay? Yeah. So, with all these options, all right, you can spend hours and hours and hours on the internet researching, but the best option is to go to a shop, talk to somebody like us that know how to fit a helmet and put all these options in front of you within your budget, all right, you can buy a helmet that's going to be safe on the road for less than £100 to well over £2,000, yeah. all right, so it really, you know, the options are endless, but to go to a shop, talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about, okay? Mm. You'll end up with a helmet that fits and is safe and is legal. You know, I quite like the idea of jeans yeah. on a bike. I mean, is jeans there, on is the there, bike. A yeah, is there, a, is there a pair of trousers that- Follow me, young man. <laughs> <laughs> and do you do in extra fat? Extra fat, no, yeah. you're, you're a full size normal gentleman. <laughs> all right, so good thing about jeans, all right, I know you're obviously a fashionista. <laughs> yeah. All right, so motorcycle jeans, they really don't cost that much more than a normal pair of super dry or, or um, anything like that, okay? But these, they have got Kevlar or Kovec woven into the fabric. So again, when we're talking about safety equipment, they're going to be cool on a hot day, mm. okay? Um, you can even buy um, versions of these cargo pants, but they've oh. got that Kevlar in Kevlar. them. Normal pair of jeans that you're wearing today, they'll mm. last one to two seconds sliding down the road before they rip. Mm. Motorcycle jeans like these are designed to last six to eight seconds mm. sliding down the road before they rip. You should stop in eight seconds, shouldn't you? So whilst, you, <laughs> <laughs> whilst you're going to obviously feel it, yeah your skin's gonna be protected. 
So something like this is a great option for summer riding and you know, if you're out there social riding, you're not gonna be in a the, in the rainstorm or anything like that. These are gonna keep you safer than a normal pair of jeans or please don't wear joggers no. or go out in mankini and flip flops. <laughs> <No. laughs> or trainers even. Or trainers That's the even. That's next on the next step. So let's boots. have a look at boots. Feet wear. So, what we always say, obviously, because they look like like a racing boot, uh, you know, what we're using them motor um, racing. They're again, very similar. Something like this from Alpine Stars. Other manufacturers are available. Okay, you've got a strap there that keeps the laces out of the way, and that boot is not going to come off in yeah. a crash. It gives you excellent ankle protection. Again, this is something that's really great in the summer. Okay. Yeah, in the winter, like in the winter, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that, even something it, yeah. like this. And again, yeah. these boots, they don't cost anything more than a fancy pair of trainers. No. They're comfortable all day. You can wear them to work. So it depends how, you know, what sort of riding you're doing. If you're just commuting, something like this mm. is going to work great in a work, work environment as well. So you don't have to take with you several yeah, pairs of shoes sense. or anything else. But footwear, and gloves and your jacket and your helmet, those are, the, those are the items. But something like this is going to protect your ankles. You can imagine how vulnerable your ankles mm. are in yeah. just trainers yeah. if you're sliding down the road. Yeah, yeah, so something like this is really essential, particularly if you're going through to your full license. Mm. That yeah. makes sense? Yeah. Cool. Gloves. Gloves. Just behind you, my friend. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so again, gloves. I'm sure, Adam, when you come out the pub, <laughs> Um, slightly worse for wear. You yeah, might trip, up, might trip over happened. one of them, one it's of the many potholes in the pavement. Never happened. ever happened, is it, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing we do when yeah, we fall over? Put our hands down. Put our hands out. Yeah. So something like this again from Oxford. Leather motorcycle gloves. You got leather palms. Double stitching around the fingers. That's stones flicking up as well. I presume. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we've all, when we've been in cars, had a stone come up. Mm crack the windscreen, well you can imagine a stone or even a bee mm. hitting you at 70 miles an hour, you're going to feel it. So you need some decent gloves. Good thing about motorcycle gloves, they've all got straps, they keep, you, keep them on your hands should you be unfortunate enough to have a crash, mm. okay? So we don't want to be wearing gardening gloves for example, <laughs> do we? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so again, there's a vast range of, uh, of gloves. The fabric gloves, they're going to be uh, better for use when it's raining. Again, you can see these leather palms. So again, when we put our hands down, you've got that abrasion resistance, but they're going to be waterproof. Mm -hmm. The higher end gloves, they'll have a Gore-Tex lining or something similar. That'll allow your hands to breathe. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. and keep you dry and warm. When we're cold and wet on a bike, mm -hmm. we just want to get home, don't we? Yeah. All right, jackets next. That's the other Jackets? Thing. Yes. Well, you're spending some money today, oh, yeah. aren't you? Let's go and have a look over here. So we've obviously got this, the suits there, which I want to sort of keep away from, really. I'm not really... Again, yeah. it, you know, it just depends on what sort of riding you're going to be doing. You know, once you get into bikes, yeah. it's a drug, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you want to yeah. ride Colors more and more. Like and yeah. what you'll find over the years, you might start off with one or two items, but then you want to go for a longer ride. Something like this, you might want to go away for a couple of days touring on your bike. And then you're going to need something like this. Mm. Something like this Richard jacket here, okay? Again, so that's, that's not a lot of money. That's not a lot of money. It really is not no. a lot of money. Like I said, yeah. you know, we've got, we've got a range here, um, right from that novice level through to, you know, the, the rider that's out there touring. But a jacket like this, got an inner liner that you can zip out. Mm. So on a hot day, you can take that out. On a cold day, keep the liner in. Yeah. And again, you've got vents to let a bit of air flow through. So something like that is, you know, great for all round use, all, all year round use. And you've got the uh, matching trousers. Yeah, see there they go. See again, oh. when you think about this, and it's important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Armour. Yeah. Armour. And in the back, mm -hmm. there's a space for a back protector. Okay, so again, you can go as far as you want to go with the safety side of things. If you don't want to be wearing stuff like that, and you're just yeah. a summer rider, oh, my yeah, friend, I can see it. Jeans, pub, jeans, you know, yeah, ankle boots. Fashion. Then we can come over <laughs> to something like this. 
Yeah, see, I picked that out earlier, funny enough. I quite like the look of that. It looks yeah, quite smart. You know what? I think they'll look pretty good yeah. on you. Oh, I see. I'm doing a deal, mate. <laughs> okay. So we look at something like that again. Yeah. We've got a liner in there, waterproof. Yeah. yeah. And even it's something like this. It almost looks like a shirt. It does yeah. look like a shirt, but again, you've got the armour in yeah, the uh, armor. elbows, armour in the shoulders. Again, space yeah. for a back protector. And it's Kevlar or Kovec lined, both high abrasion materials. So again, mm. this is not just a normal jacket. This is something, if you're sliding down the road, will not rip. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you can see around here such a vast array of stuff. Again, it gets oh, too much information. Mm -hmm. You can research the hell out of all this online. If you go to a shop, come to us, get some advice. We'll find something for you mm -hmm. in your budget. Well, you'll look good, mate, as well. <laughs> I don't know, that's important. <laughs> right then, good. So that's the clothing done. Because um, you're one of the instructors as well, aren't you? I am one of the instructors here, yeah. And I'm a nervous Nelly, and I understand that you're good with the nervous Nellies. <laughs> the thing is, we do have an awful lot of students that come to us that are really passionate about bikes. Mm. Yeah, right? I've, I've always wanted a bike. I've just but, not been allowed to have yeah, one, Yeah, and, and, you know, family members, parents, children, girlfriends. <laughs> oh, you're not going on a motorbike, it's dangerous. Well, a motorcycle isn't intrinsically dangerous, OK? And most of the time, it's us starting from a low level, off-road, getting you confidence in riding the bike, getting that control in you. Confidence level comes up, and yes, there'll be setbacks along the way, but again, everybody learns at different rates. Because mm, okay. I dare say you're gonna come off at some point, aren't you? Um, it's unlikely when you're training, mm. okay, certainly in the, in the future, but the way we train, we tailor certainly the course to that student, we're not going to put you on a dual carriageway until you've got that basic control there mm. and then we get you up to speed on the single carriageway road, get used to the wind blast. I mean, it's really different mm. on a bike than it ever is in a car. <laughs> yeah. Get you used to that gradually, you know, depending on that mindset and how confident you are. But we're never going to put you in a position where you're going to fall to pieces. Mm. So it's always tailored to the student and the confidence that they have in themselves. So can you normally pick up straight away on a student? I mean, because I did a bit of instructing in racing cars and, and you could Were tell- Were you any all... good? <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you could tell straight away, as soon as a person got in there and what they did, how their mannerisms were and how they, how they looked around stuff and touched stuff. And you could tell whether they'd got it within, within a minute of them getting in. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and uh, myself and Ian, um, uh, the owner of the business and one of the other instructors here, um, he's very, we've been doing it a while and um, you can tell by the body language on the bike <laughs> whether somebody's tensing up <laughs> and whether that's going to be an issue and you can tell, yeah, when we get them first on dual carriageway there might be some reticence and mm. some confidence issues and all the rest of it and again, just coax them through, and, you know, whenever you're out training with us Two, there's there's a, a radio mm. link, all right. So and um, and certainly at the early part of the training, there's an awful lot of instruction goes on through the radio. Mm. So and we're there to keep you safe mm. at all times. Thanks for that, Mark. It's, it's sort of explained a lot, really, and a lot to thank um, Ian and Rachel, obviously, for sort of explaining how it all works, and obviously yourself, as as I said. Um, and I hope that sort of enlightens other people you know if you want to come, come and do your bike license if you've been wanting to ride a bike there's nothing to be worried about the people that are here know what they're talking about you can do any aspect of it you want so come and do it come and see one to one motorcycle training they're the boys and girls thank you for that rachel <laughs> stacy the dad's favorite and ian who won't come into shop but he's here he's home in there um thanks everybody for watching i hope that's a little bit of an insight into doing your bike license and helpful I think it is. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we we'll see you next time. There's some, I'm supposed to do something, Mark, but I can't remember what it is now. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Give us a little look and a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs>
progression you through onto a transfer. <laughs> you really are not helping me today. <laughs> You've been calling him all sorts.